Hey, this is Reverend Joanna Bartlett, and I thought I'd do a, a quick video about death anniversaries, right? Anniversaries, birthdays, or the anniversary of somebody's death, or the anniversary of a wedding anniversary, perhaps, of a loved one who has died and who is in spirit. What do you do? How do you deal with them? How do you get through them? Um, how do you celebrate them? So the reason I'm doing this today is because today is my mum's birthday and my mum died eight years ago from liver cancer that had metastasized into her lungs by the time we found out about it and she passed very quickly um, from the time that she was diagnosed. It was three weeks after she was diagnosed that she died and today's her birthday and um, it's a little bit different every year almost her birthday for me and so what I'm going to be doing today which is what I traditionally do on her birthday is I go get some delicious desserts from Sweet Life Patisserie which is our a local bakery that has really good yummy treats and has gluten-free treats as well so that I can eat them and we will sit around the dinner table with the kids and we'll talk about my mum and we'll talk about what we remember about her. And my kids were um, pretty young when she passed. They were <clears throat> four, six and eight and 12, I guess. And so, especially my youngest probably doesn't really remember my mum very much. And you know, that's sad for me and it's also okay, it is what it is. And I asked my, um, the now 14 year old, who was six at the time, I asked him just the other day, I said, what do you remember about Nanny? Do you really remember her? And he said, yeah, I remember her. And my heart warmed. And uh, he doesn't remember a lot about her. He doesn't uh, remember a lot. He doesn't have a lot of probably specific memories. And as he, you know, he's only 14. So as he grows older, he'll probably have, you know, they'll fade even more. But he, I think he remembers the love and the love connection that he had with my mom because she just adored, adored my kids and her grandkids. And so that's what we'll do. We'll eat some yummy food that she would have approved of. She's French, so French desserts, you know, she's totally into. And we'll talk about her and we'll talk about shared memories and I'll tell stories about my mom, my kids, you know, things that they don't know about or didn't experience for themselves. And we'll keep her memory alive and our love for her alive in that way. One of the things I think that allows me to be able to do that in a good and loving way without pain is that I have gone through the process of resolving what has felt incomplete and painful about my relationship with my mom. And so I get to remember the fond memories without them turning sad or painful. I've done that, as you may know, through the grief recovery method, and I'm an advanced grief, I'm an advanced certified grief recovery specialist at this point, which means I get to work with people in person and online all throughout the world to help them move through the process of grief so that they can let go of the pain. You don't let go of the relationship, you don't let go of the love, you don't let go of or forget the memories, all of that always is present. But you know, to be able to celebrate instead of it being a painful thing, I had a dream about my mom last night and I don't remember it specifically, like, you know, the specifics of the dream is kind of fuzzy, but I remember that she was helping me in the dream. She was trying to be helpful for, to me in some way, which is really awesome. And I get to wake up from those kinds of dreams with, with happiness and joy in my heart about that connection, about that little visit from her in my dreams. I've been dreaming about her quite a bit lately. And, um, but, you know, these anniversaries, right, death anniversaries can be really, really hard. And it makes sense that they're hard because it brings up all the unresolved stuff that you have in terms of your relationship with that person. All the things that you wish you could have said or wish the wish things maybe you wish you hadn't said. The ways that things could have been different or better, more in some way. Um, the things that you wish you had sorted out with that person or that hadn't gone wrong in the first place. You know, we have a lot of regret about other relationships, especially we have a lot of regret, I think, in our relationships in general, even with people that we are still in relationship with and we're not quite sure what to do about that stuff. But especially for people who are no longer physically alive, because we don't like have a way, most of us, you know, we are not, we're just not taught the tools of how to 
express that or resolve that within ourselves. And so we're left with this jumble of stuff that we try to work out in our heads, right? We try to work through it. If this, if, you know, if only this, if I'd said that, we have these imaginary conversations and arguments sometimes, and it doesn't really get us anywhere because it doesn't help our hearts do the emotional processing that they need to do. And so these anniversaries can be really hard because it brings all that stuff back up again. You know, the rest of your, at the time of your everyday life, perhaps you're able to get through the days or one day or half a day or an hour without thinking about um, your loved one. Perhaps several days go by and you're like, you just kind of get on with, with the process of living. And then an anniversary comes up and it's all right there again, right in front of you, right within you. And I, I did another video um, a little while ago about why these anniversaries are so hard. And so this one is about what do you do with them? What do you do with that? And so for me now, I celebrate as much as possible. I celebrate. I remember the joy and the love and the connection that we shared. And I'm able to do that. I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful I'm able to do that because I've learned the tools to move through the painful stuff and resolve it and not carry it anymore. I just don't have to carry it. And that's a really wonderful thing. Um, and other than that, you know, I still have some years. I never know. I never know how it's going to be, right? If it's going to be a hard day or you know like the anniversary of the day that she died if that's going to feel really heavy or if it's going to feel okay um that is a harder one to celebrate honestly and so it's a day that i'm gentle with myself it's a day that i'm kind to myself i give myself as much space as i can you know perhaps take the day off other people don't have to understand or know why necessarily they probably may not understand if you have to call in sick to work take a mental health day, whatever, you know, just take some time for yourself if you can. Take time to be with yourself, to be kind to yourself, to be gentle, to feel the things that you're feeling. Because one of the things we get afraid of the feelings that we have, we try to stuff them down or we try to distract ourselves from them. We try to avoid them and they're still there and they're not going anywhere unless we feel them and we kind of walk through them and move through them. So compassion for yourself, kindness, giving yourself a little bit of space. And if at all possible, celebrate. Reach out to people. Let them know. Like I'm letting you know, right? This is my mom's birthday today. She would have been, oh, she would have been 72 today. I don't know how she would have felt about that. She was never fond of the idea of growing old. And so, you know, now she doesn't have to, I suppose. But um, yeah, it would have been, she would have been 72. And uh, it's bittersweet. And it's okay. It's okay to feel bittersweet emotions and conflicting emotions. It's okay to feel love and joy and sadness. Right? How you feel is real. It's valid. You're allowed to feel it. I give you permission to feel it. It's okay. So be kind to yourself. Be good to yourself. And... When you're ready, when you're ready to move through the pain of what is unresolved, let me know. I am here. I'm available. I can now work with people worldwide, and I would love to help you move forward so that you can let go of your unresolved pain and no longer limit your capacity for happiness in your life. So take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next video.